Well, joining us now uh, from London is from London is Al Jazeera's uh, senior political analyst Marwan Bishar. Marwan, thanks for being with us. I want to ask you first of all. Um, uh, about uh, the news uh, that came last night and then the confirmation today uh, f from the uh, al waqf uh, uh, committee. This is seen as a, a victory today for Palestinians, but where does this fit in terms of their uh, larger struggle uh, with Israel? Well, Hazem, let's call it a victory because it is a victory for the people in Palestine. It's a victory for popular resistance it's a victory for nonviolent actions and civil disobedience. And certainly, it's a victory for those who are steadfast in Jerusalem and those who supported them in Palestine and the rest of the world. But I must caution that this might be a triumph this time around. It might be a, a, a triumph in this battle. But certainly, the war is not won, and Israel, as an occupying power, has many, many options now to play against the Palestinians because really this has been a, a, a major fiasco for the Israeli government, for Prime Minister Netanyahu himself, because this was a political decision, not a security decision from the security uh, arms of the Israeli government. So this major PR fiasco, this major political fiasco, this major strategic fiasco where Netanyahu certainly now looks like the occupying power in Jerusalem, uh, unlike what he's been delusional about denying, all of that means that I think he will probably try to get back against the Palestinians. So I think we should prepare for another confrontation, not because the Palestinians might now unite in order to raise their demands and enter into a much wider civil disobedience type uprising. What worries me more at this, point, at this point in time is the Israelis taking their revenge against the Palestinians because they have been humiliated this week. And uh, Marwan, our correspondent Stephanie made the point there that this was very much a, a, a kind of people-led uh, a sh a sh a show of, of protest. There wasn't one particular leader who, ca who called for this. This was kind of a, a, a grassroots uh, protest. So I, I guess my question is, who really represents the Palestinian people at this point? Well, look, believe it or not, back in 1987 in the first intifada and in previous smaller intifadas in the early 80s, and in the late 70s, when the mayors were bombed by Israeli extremists, 76, 77 and onwards, up until 2000 and that intifada in its beginnings, it was always the people leading the intifadas in Palestine. This time around, it was even more obvious because it happened in East Jerusalem, where uh, President Abbas has no authority. This is completely under Israeli occupation. And where Abbas was more or less supportive because it didn't happen in Ramallah, and he did not have to deal with it. As we all know, the Palestinian president is not for another uprising, although now he is supporting this because of its strategic weight, because of its nature, and because of its success, there is no doubt. So all in all, uh, it has been Palestinian leaders who have tried to ride the popular will, if you will, in Palestine. We hope this time around that Hamas and Fatah will learn the lessons and unite over the kind of popular nonviolent resistance against the Israelis, because this is really the way forward. This is the best way in order to resolve this issue in Palestine, is to make sure that Palestinians are united against Israel on a peaceful platform for sovereignty and independence of a Palestinian state. Marwan Bashar, a senior political analyst, joining us there from London. Thank you.